Last but not least, one of my favorites, Supplemental Tablet 15, Secret of Secrets. The path to eternal life is discussed first by receiving power to reveal the God-man. Darkness and light are asserted to be from the same nature, only perceived differently, given the fact that the Creator of all permits both for duality contrast. Light is order and darkness is disorder. We are told that our purpose for being is to transmute the darkness in our incarnation into light. Man is deemed to have a threefold composition, which is a subset of nine total elements, as above, so below on earth. 4. Physical blood movements facilitate the heart beating. Magnetism traveling through the nerve ganglion pathways is claimed to provide energy for cells and tissues. The Akasa flows through subtle energy channels in the body for a complete system. The three work in unison, allowing life in the body. The skeletal system is formed from where the system, where the Akasa subtle energy flows, like an antenna as I have posited. Mastering the elements allows the secret of life in the body, the, ka, the Ba, to be activated, enabling one to choose to relinquish the body only when the mission is accomplished on earth. Based on the three energy body distinctions provided by Drunvalo, Chakra, Prana, and Auric, these three fall under physical. Number five, astral. This energy component has three aspects. Mediator, between the above and the below. B, non-spiritual. Not sure how spirit and energy nature are dif differentiated. I often use the term spirit and energy interchangeably. The energy field that has the potential to use the earth portal is the Ba, the Merkaba star tetrahedron field has the key elements cited for this access, the Ba and the Ka. Non-physical, item C. Able to move above and below, which is what we on here on Earth term an out-of-body experience, or OOB. Number six, mental. The mind also has three natures. Carry of the will of the Great One. B, arbiter of cause. C, arbiter of effect. We are told that in addition to these three natures is the spiritual self, which is composed of four qualities, penetrating all parallel dimensions, worlds within worlds, nine total. The number 13 is denoted as a mystical number of the Great One, based on the nature of the dimensions appearing as one, separated by the law of time, the number is composed as a summation of the nine dimensions, three natures of man, plus the infinite nature of the source, for a total of 13. Is this why the 13th zodiacal sign has been occluded, that of Ophiuchus? Also significant is the Mayan Zulkan calendar, division of the creation account into seven days and six nights, which totals 13 columns in the representation. Also significant while assigning importance to numbers is the fact that the nine rows in ascending consciousness is a map to the nine underworld frequencies according to the Mayans. A final correlation is that Thoth discloses nine worlds within worlds or parallel dimensions exist. The account continues, stating that we are held in bondage by a frequency vibration alluded to by Drunvalo as a false Merkaba field. Reference 32, page 103. Obviously set up by the Dark Lords. This false field binds the consciousness of mankind to the third dimension. The way out is embedded in us all which is not stated but implied to be the light-born birthright we received from our genetic archetype Lord Enki Poseidon himself. We are told during an oob we are to rise to the outermost limits of the earth plane or third dimensional sphere discussed more fully in chapter 12, Realities Bounds, Spherical Energy Layers. This dimensional boundary limit is discussed by the oob pioneer Robert Monroe, labeling the accessible boundaries locales 1 through 3 reference 30. Next we are given the earth portal activation word separating the third dimension from the duat, which connects via 15 pathways to a rulu ending up in the sixth dimension by inference. Speak ye the word dor e lila. After a short time your light will be lifted allowing passage through the space barrier. A time limit of six hours is provided to go to a rulu and visit those who occupy the sacred land. There, seeing and knowing the destination of one sun soul at the end of the third dimensional cessation, willed or otherwise, and of the need of an earth suit, energy container. An oob process is specified in order to leave the body and access the portal out of the prison planet earth. 
Lie down and relax the mind and body. Make your intention of leaving the body, focusing on the portal as one's destination. Repeat the thought to be free of the body. Then think of the word, La Um Ilagan, letting it resonate at the sound in your mind. Drifting with the energy vibration, subsequently leaving the body and visualizing the third dimensional energy boundary sphere as the destination where the portal is to be accessed. Enjoy your six-hour visit in heaven so that you will know your destiny as a light being, a birthright inherited from the creator of all. It is not stated in the tablet, but simply thinking of returning to the body will automatically initiate the end of one's astral voyage. Be sure to write down a transcript of your experience as soon as you are able in order to capture all the details for later analysis. When I was a teenager, the oob process began to happen to me spontaneously, resulting in my fascination for flying like a bird without any aircraft. I had what I thought were just vivid dreams of standing on a railroad tie fence post at a corner position supporting the gate to our farm pasture and barn, turning into the wind and taking off like a bird at will. This went on unidentified as an oob until the age of 17 while attending Point Lama High School in 1982. Professor Dick Englehart offered a mysticism class as part of the humanities requirement wherein we were asked to keep a diary. An entry in my diary caught his attention concerning an oob that I had recently recorded while living in Ocean Beach, a community near my high school that is famous for its pier and Newport Avenue hippie scene. Commonly when leaving the body, especially as a newbie, fear limits the duration in this unknown realm often resulting in very short trips, certainly not six hours, more like seconds. On this particular diary entry, I relayed the fear felt when re-entering the body and being fully awake and aware of my otherworldly experience. I found myself unable to speak or move for some time. It was mortifying as no sound could be generated and my back was in a strange position on a fold-out bed, resting across a metal support bar uncomfortably at the lumbar spine. Dr. Englehart kept me after class to discuss the diary entry about the oob. He noted that it was treated as a recurring event in my life and told me emphatically I needed to read Robert Monroe's book, Journey Out of the Body, reference 30. I found great comfort in the shared experiences and techniques disclosed in the book, knowing that this explained what was happening to me spawning the zeal for flight. For those who have not been exposed to my radio interviews and lectures, I chose to leave college right after high school to pursue one of my lifetime chants to fly like a hummingbird, choosing to serve in the military from 1982 to 1989 as a Chief Warrant Officer too. My assigned aircraft qualifications after completing flight school, light blue class, class 8513, included both AH-1 Cobra attack and OH-58 Aero Scout helicopters. However, my experience flying for the Army did not fully satisfy the experience I had during a noob. Later in 1999, ten years as a civilian, the skies reached out to me again, pulling me back heavenward. My qualification as a hang glider pilot began, and soon I was flying free like a bird in the various sites sponsored by the United States Hang Gliding and Paragliding Association, which can be investigated online for the air enthusiast. My real-life experience, as close as it gets in my book, was one of my last flights at a glass-off about 5 p.m. at that time of the year, at one of my favorite places, Horse Canyon, the rocky and mountainous terrain just north of Interstate 8 off Buckman Springs Road exit, is the unique sight in that the prevailing westerlies coming off the Pacific Ocean meet the warm, dry air of the East County Desert, causing a lift zone that runs north and south for a substantive distance. This convergence zone is easily accessed by hang gliders and some brave paragliders pilots as well. On this particular day, I was one of only two pilots present. My paraglider pilot and friend, Ron Smith, took off from the upper peak of Horse Canyon during the smooth flying conditions caused by a more even radiation of terrestrial trap solar energy. This showed up as a uniform smooth flying experience, almost effortless and devoid of the violent wind gusts and turbulence present in altitudes achieved there, sometimes over 10,000 feet above ground level AGL. For some reason, to my surprise, given that paragliders can fly in far less wind than hang gliders can, Ron got flushed out and had what we in the business term a sled ride to the landing zone, the LZ. My expectation was that I too would get a sled ride lasting no more than three to five minutes and begin to break my glider down 
with Ron after an uneventful attempt at experiencing the wonders of an effortless flight in the beautiful mountains of East County, San Diego. I launched with little to no wind, relying on the ridge lift that I had located and used many times before, envisioning the lifting force of the thermals as a liquid medium that, when striking an object, would have resultant flow vectors and directions. Seeing the terrain using this etheric water model helps anticipate staying ahead of the glider, as decisions must be made rapidly to avert deadly accidents. Following the ridge to my left, remaining in close proximity to the lift envelope created by the 4,000-foot AGL mountain line, my secret serpent friend lay waiting. There is a rock feature called the rattlesnake, used by glider pilots who know Horse Canyon well. This vertically winding rock feature located at the apex of an upward sloping canyon creates an impediment to the thermals drifting with the wind. As a drifting and rising column of warm air impacts a terrestrial feature like the rattlesnake, strong thermal vents often lead to cloud formation at the dew point temperature for water at some altitude return thermal equilibrium. Rising to this location is usually not possible in glass off conditions at day's end. But, the lift being generated at the special snake rock led to my solitary experience which most closely approximated the feeling of an oob. Arriving at the rattlesnake, just barely high enough to be useful, I found the sacred breath of the snake. Its hissing but mellow breath raised the kite, fashioned from fabric and aluminum poles, with me suspended in a cocoon below. The rattlesnake trigger point produced enough upward lift that I was able to make it to a set of twin peaks, which were just visible north of Buckman Springs rest area. The twin peaks are often a good place to head when the wind is coming more out of the north. Although at glass off time there was very little wind, just enough to cause one to turn left and not right toward the rock pile at launch. Ron was asked via radio if he needed to return to town and indicated he did not allowing me to explore the Twin Peaks in my glider until the magical flying conditions ended near sundown. While circling the peak of the first twin granite pyramid-shaped mountain, a raptor caught my eye, leaving its nest atop the rock. Triggering its territorial imperative to protect its hunting grounds, the red-tailed hawk joined me in a counterclockwise circle as I intruded on its domain. The encounter could have gone very badly, as predatory birds will attack an intruder without notice, often climbing high above, then suddenly diving on the prey with the added force of gravity to facilitate a mortal wound imparted at very high speed. Hang gliders are very aware of such dangers when flying in remote mountain sites where raptors nest. Suddenly the hawk came close to me, both of us circling the same direction, eye to eye, looking in the direction of the coordinated turn. Mystically, possessed of a meta-awareness with time seemingly sans still, at this very moment I felt complete transcendent sensation that this was truly the closest spiritual experience in waking life that I had during an oob. Soaring with a creature I was mimicking was the penultimate experience for me, unconcerned about the Greek legend of a fellow flight aspirant who met a mortal end by getting his wings too close and subsequently melted by the heat of the sun. Returning back to Thoth's process after a long-winded story, we're instructed to stand before the gates of the Duat and command the guardians by these words. I am the light, in me is no darkness, free am I of the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one, so I may pass to the realm of wisdom. Expect the gate guards to refuse you, then say, I am the light, for me are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets, Edom el Ahim, Sabert Zer Adam. Then, if thy words have been truth of the highest, then the barriers will open for you. The tablet closes with encouragements to win ye the way to me, my children. This is an open invitation only to those that seek his wisdom. Thoth states, I am the key and the way. Does this last statement sound familiar to you, Bible scholars? It should now that you know the AKA list for Thoth also included the person known as Yahashua or Jesus to the Christians. The keys to the kingdom of heaven rest in Thoth's control, which is provided to you here. Now for the actual tablet text. Now ye assemble, my children, waiting to hear the secret of secrets, which shall give ye power to unfold the God-man. Give ye the way to eternal life. 
plainly shall I speak of the unveiled mysteries. No dark saying shall I give unto thee. Open thine ears now, my children. Hear and obey the words that I give. First I shall speak of the fetters of darkness, which bind ye in chains to the sphere of the earth. Darkness and light are both of one nature, different only in seeming, for each arose from the source of all. Darkness is disorder, light is order. Darkness transmuted is light of the light. This, my children, your purpose in being, transmutation of darkness to light. Hear ye now the mysteries of nature, the relations of life to the earth where it dwells. Know ye, ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Three are the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all, above as below. In the physical are these channels, the blood which moves in vortical motion, reacting on the heart to continue its beating, magnetism which moves through the nerve paths, carries of energy at all cells and tissue, a casa which flows through channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels, each of the three attuned with the other, each affecting the life of the body. Form they the skeletal framework through which the subtle ether flows. In their mastery lies the secret of life in the body, relinquished only by the will of the adept when his purpose in living is done. Three are the natures of the astral, mediator is between above and below not of the physical, not of the spiritual, but able to move above and below. Three are the natures of mind, carrier of the will of the Great One, arbitrator of cause and effect in thy life. Thus is formed the threefold being, directed from above by the power of four. Above and beyond man's threefold nature lies the realm of the spiritual self. Four is it in qualities, shining in each of the planes of existence, but thirteen in one. The mystical number, based on the qualities of man, are the brothers. Each shall direct the unfoldment of being. Each shall channel be of the Great One. On earth man is in bondage, bound by space and time to the earth plane. Encircling each planet, a wave of vibration binds him to his plane of unfoldment. Yet within man is the key to releasement. Within man may freedom be found. When ye have released the self from the body, rise to the outermost bounds of your earth plane. Speak ye the words, Dor ye lila. Then for a time your light will be lifted. Free may ye pass the barriers of space. For a time half of the sun, six hours, free may ye pass the barriers of earth plane. See and know those who are beyond thee. Yea, to the highest worlds may ye pass. See your own possible heights of an unfoldment. Know all earthly futures of souls. Bound are ye in your body, but by the power ye, ye may be free. This is the secret whereby bondage shall be replaced by freedom for thee. Calm let thy mind be, at rest be thy body, conscious only of freedom from flesh. Center thy being on the goal of thy longing. Think over and over that thou wouldst be free. Think of this word, la um il ganuver. Over and over in thy mind let it sound. Drift with the sound to the place of thy longing, free from the bondage of flesh by thy will. Hear ye while I give the greatest of secrets, how ye may enter the halls of Amente. Enter the place of the immortals as I did. Stand before the lords in their places. Lie ye down in rest of thy body. Calm thy mind so no thought disturbs thee. Here must ye be in mind and in purpose, else only failure will come unto thee. Vision of Menti as I have told in my tablets, long with fullness of heart to be there. Stand before the Lord's in thy mind's eye, pronounce the words of power I give mentally. Mekut el Shab el Hale, Sir Ben el Zabrut, Zin Ephraim Quar el. Relax thy mind and thy body. Then be sure your soul will be called. Now give I the key to Shambhala, the place where my brother lives in darkness. Darkness but filled with light of the sun, darkness of earth but light of the spirit, guides for ye when my day is done. Leave thou thy body as I have taught thee, pass to the barriers of the deep, hidden place, 
Stand before the gates and their guardians. Command thy entrance by these words. I am the light, in me is no darkness. Free am I of the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one, so I may pass to the realm of wisdom. When they refuse thee, as surely they will, command them to open by these words of power. I am the light, for me are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets. Edom, el Ahim, Sabert, Zer, Adam. Then if thy words have been truth of the highest, open for thee, the barriers will fall. Now I leave thee, my children, down, yet up to the hall shall I go. Win ye the way to me, my children, truly my brothers shall ye become. Thus finish I my writings. Keys let them be to those who come after, but only to those who seek my wisdom. Down and relax the mind and body. Make your intention of leaving the body, focusing on the portal as one's destination. Repeat the thought to be free of the body. Then think of the word, La Um Ilagan, letting it resonate as a sound in your mind. Drifting with the energy vibration, subsequently leaving the body and visualizing the third dimensional energy boundary sphere as the destination where the portal is to be accessed. Enjoy your six-hour visit in heaven so that you will know your destiny as a light being, a birthright inherited from the creator of all. It is not stated in the tablet, but simply thinking of returning to the body will automatically initiate the end of one's astral voyage. Be sure to write down a transcript of your experience as soon as you are able in order to capture all the details for later analysis. When I was a teenager, the oob process began to happen to me spontaneously, resulting in my fascination for flying like a bird without any aircraft. I had what I thought were just vivid dreams of standing on a railroad tie fence post at a corner position supporting the gate to our farm pasture and barn, turning into the wind and taking off like a bird at will. This went on worlds within worlds, nine total. The number 13 is denoted as a mystical number of the Great One, based on the nature of the dimensions appearing as one, separated by the law of time. The number is composed as a summation of the nine dimensions, three natures of man, plus the infinite nature of the source, for a total of 13. Is this why the 13th zodiacal sign has been occluded, that of Ophiuchus? Also significant is the Mayan Zulkan calendar, division of the creation account into seven days and six nights which totals 13 columns in the representation. Also significant while assigning importance to numbers is the fact that the nine rows in ascending consciousness is a map to the nine underworld frequencies according to the Mayans. A final correlation is that Thoth discloses nine worlds within worlds or parallel dimensions exist. The account continues stating that we are held in bondage by a frequency vibration alluded to by Drunvalo as a false Merkaba field. Reference 32, page 103. Obviously set up by the Dark Lords. This false field binds the consciousness of mankind to the third dimension. The way out is embedded in us all, which is not elements allows the secret of life in the body, the, ka, the ba, to be activated, enabling one to choose to relinquish the body only when the mission is accomplished on earth. Based on the three energy body distinctions provided by Drunvalo, Chakra, Prana, and Auric, these three fall under physical. Number five, astral. This energy component has three aspects. Mediator, between the above and the below. B, non-spiritual. Not sure how spirit and energy nature are dif differentiated. I often use the term spirit and energy interchangeably. The energy field that has the potential to use the earth portal is the Ba. The Merkaba star tetrahedron field has the key elements cited for this access, the Ba and the Ka. Non-physical, item C. Able to move above and below, which is what we on here on Earth term an out-of-body experience, or oob. Number six, mental. The mind also has three natures. Carry of the will of the Great One. B, arbiter of cause. C, arbiter of effect. We are told that in addition to these three natures is the spiritual self, which is composed of four qualities, penetrating all parallel dimensions, world stated but implied to be the light-born birthright we received from our genetic archetype, Lord Enki Poseidon himself. 
We are told during an oob we are to rise to the outermost limits of the earth plane or third dimensional sphere discussed more fully in chapter 12, Realities Bounds, Spherical Energy Layers. This dimensional boundary limit is discussed by the oob pioneer Robert Monroe, labeling the accessible boundaries locales 1 through 3, reference 30. Next we are given the earth portal activation word separating the third dimension from the duat which connects via 15 pathways to a rulu ending up in the sixth dimension by inference. Speak ye the word dor e lil a After a short time your light will be lifted allowing passage through the space barrier. A time limit of six hours is provided to go to a rulu and visit those who occupy the sacred land. There seeing and knowing the destination of one sun soul at the end of the third dimensional cessation, willed or otherwise, and of the need of an earth suit energy container. An oob process is specified in order to leave the body and access the portal out of the prison planet earth. Lie down. Last but not least one of my favorite supplemental tablet 15 secret of secrets. The path to eternal life is discussed first by receiving power to reveal the God man. Darkness and light are asserted to be from the same nature, only perceived differently, given the fact that the creator of all permits both for duality contrast. Light is order and darkness is disorder. We are told that our purpose for being is to transmute the darkness in our incarnation into light. Man is deemed to have a threefold composition, which is a subset of nine total elements, as above, so below on earth. 4. Physical blood movements facilitate the heart beating. Magnetism traveling through the nerve ganglion pathways is claimed to provide energy for cells and tissues. The Akasa flows through subtle energy channels in the body for a complete system. The three work in unison, allowing life in the body. The skeletal system is formed from where the system, where the Akasa subtle energy flows, like an antenna as I have posited. Mastering the 